Good morning, good morning. This is Jamaica Live. We're on Bridge 99. I wasn't here last week. My apologies. I had to be abroad. But let me thank Empress for pinch hitting for me. And I, I'm told she did a good job. So I'm glad to be back with you. Start of a new week. Almost the end of the first month of 2023. Can you believe that? Time flies so fast. But it's Jamaica Live. We're on Bridge 99. The hottest topic of public discussion over the last few days has been the report of large-scale fraud at the Investment House Stocks and Securities Limited, and for understandable reasons. The extent of the thievery, millions and millions of dollars, US dollars and Jamaican dollars. And then there's the fact that one of the victims, perhaps the one from whom the largest amount was stolen, is Usain Bolt. And because he's one of the victims, the story is all over the international media. Just Google Usain Bolt and the fraud story bolts up on news sources in North America, Europe, in Asia, Africa, South America, virtually everywhere. A statement has been circulated in the media from a what is called a wealth advisor attached to stocks and securities, detailing how much money she stole and how she stole the money from people's accounts repeatedly from about 2010. She said she started doing this to cover the medical expenses for her father who was suffering from cancer. But she evidently found it so easy to take other people's money without being detected. That according to her and her statement, she continued doing it long after her father had died. She listed over 40 clients whose money she had stolen. But Usain Bolt is not among them. Usain had placed 12 million US dollars with stocks and securities. But as it stands now, all that is left of that is about 12,000, not 12 million, 12,000 US dollars. So if this lady who has confessed is basically saying that she didn't touch Usain Bolt's money. Who is it that took it? How many other clients, apart from the 40, have had their money stolen? A whole heap of questions are being asked, and a whole heap of questions remain unanswered. How could this amount of thiefing go on for more than 10 years? without it being detected. What kind of business is that? People place their money with stocks and securities. That money is supposed to be invested in what its name says. Invested in stocks and securities. And those investments are supposed to earn dividends and profits for the people who put their money there. An investment company is supposed to have sophisticated accounting systems to keep track of the people's money, to be able to know at any time where the money is, what that money is invested in, shares of which company, what sort of instruments, what sort of financial instruments that the government may have floated out there that the money was used to invest in. They should be able to know exactly how much money has been earned 
on those investments? How much has been withdrawn by the client? How much has been paid out to the client? It is supposed to have an internal audit system that constantly checks to make sure that if a person puts in a million dollars, that million dollars must be matched by stocks, cash, or other financial instruments so that the, if the person wanted to get all his money back, those stocks can be sold and the financial instruments can be liquidated so that you can cut a check and give him back his money with the dividends and the profits that have been earned. So the question must be asked, where was the internal audit mechanism at Stocks and Securities? What was it doing? In addition to the internal audit, Stocks and Securities had to have external auditors. They come in each year to examine the accounts to make sure that everything is all right. It is reported that from as far back as five years ago, and bear in mind, you know, that these external auditors don't come cheap. For a company like Stocks and Securities, when they come in to audit your books, their fee for doing that is millions of dollars. Millions. I remember once looking at the UDC, for example. The UDC paid out, I think, almost $20 million to their external auditors. I don't know how much Stocks and Securities would have paid to theirs. But it is reported that from as far back as five years ago, the external auditors raised concerns about the financial operations as stocks and securities, pointing to its accumulated deficit. And it expressed doubt that the company could continue to do business. No greater alarm, no greater red flag could have been needed to indicate that the company was in deep trouble. Yet the company continued business as usual, accepting investments, accepting money placed by people for investments. So while the company was heading into a deep hole, it was allowed to continue accepting money from new people. In addition to continuing to manage the investments that other people like Bolt had placed with them at a time when the money that people like Bolt had placed was hemorrhaging, was disappearing. But was that as much as the external auditors should have done? You know, raising a red flag? To identify accumulated deficits, that is the amount of money that is owed to clients. When you find a situation where the money that you owe to clients like Bolt and others is greater than the amount of money that you have in your hands, that is one thing. But should the external auditors not have delved deeper to find out what has happened to the other clients' money, to all of the clients' money? Is it that they invested the money in stocks? Is it that stocks and securities invested the money in stocks, but the value of those stocks has gone down? Is it that the, the cost of operating stocks and securities was so great that the income that they were earning from managing people's money couldn't cover it, so they had to be dipping into people's money to pay those expenses? Or was it that people within stocks and securities were busy teething off the money, which is what it appears now to be based on the statement, the confession statement from this lady who is a wealth advisor there. Then, of course, what about the Financial Services Commission? They are the regulators who are supposed to watch over these companies to ensure that they are managing people's money properly so that people can be assured that their money is safe. It has now been revealed 
that they were aware from a long time that things were not going right. That things were not going right at stocks and securities. But what did they do? They allowed people to keep their money there, thinking that their money is safe. They allowed new people to put their money there, thinking that their money would be safe. What purpose did the Financial Services Commission serve? You know, I looked at the, its, its last annual report this morning. A report for 2018-2019. It's amazing that that is the last report they have published. But you know what it, you know what it costs each year to, to operate the Financial Services Commission? Their costs each year is about one and a half billion Jamaican dollars. That's what it costs to operate the Financial Services um, Commission. Pay the salaries and pay the rent and, and so on. That money, of course, doesn't come from the taxpayer. That money comes from fees that they collect from all of these investment houses that they are supposed to license and regulate. We saw over the weekend from a news report where the, ex the executive director, well, the current one just resigned, but the executive director has paid a salary of over 18 million Jamaican dollars. What the devil were they doing for all that money? 1.5 billion with a chief executive getting a salary of 18 million dollars a year. You know, <coughs> We had a serious problem with financial institutions back in the 1990s when there was a large-scale meltdown. You remember it? What led to FinSAC? Centuries-old institutions like Jamaica Mutual. Jamaica Mutual was formed by a group of people, including one of our national heroes, George William Gordon. And that was in existence over a year. Let me take a break and come back and continue that point. Welcome back. Jamaica Live, we're on Bridge 99. I was making the point earlier that in the 1990s, we had a serious problem with the financial meltdown, local financial meltdown. It happened here in Jamaica and was caused by things that happened here in Jamaica. And long-standing institutions like Jamaica Mutual and newer ones like Eagle, all collapsed. That led to the creation of FinSAC. And as we know, hundreds of Jamaicans who had borrowed money from these institutions lost their businesses, lost their homes, lost everything that they had worked hard for all their lives. There was a story in the Glen over the weekend of a businessman who lost everything and is now a street vendor selling knickknacks for a living. Taxpayers had to fork out over $300 billion to help cover the losses. But as a result of that calamity, some stringent rules were introduced to regulate the operation of commercial and merchant banks and other what they call deposit-taking institutions. These regulations, and I will say this, these regulations helped us to weather the storm of the global financial meltdown. Not a Jamaican one this time, but the global financial meltdown that took place in 2007-2008. It was because of those stringent regulations that we were able to weather that storm. Huge financial institutions, international organizations, multinationals like Beer Cerns collapsed. And this happened all over the world. Some of the biggest companies in the world, like General Motors, had to be rescued by the government, the American government. Jamaica went through that meltdown. And while our economy suffered, not one of our financial institutions collapsed. As a matter of fact, I mean, I was in office at the time. And we secured a contingency loan of 600 million U.S. dollars to 
just in case any of our financial institutions buckled, we would have that money to rescue them so that the people who put their money there wouldn't, wouldn't lose everything as so many did during the 1990s. But because of the regulations that we had in place, we were able to go through that meltdown and not one of our institutions collapsed. As a matter of fact, we didn't have to touch one dollar out of that 600 million. And after the meltdown had kind of eased off, we sent that 600 million dollars back to the IMF, didn't touch a penny of it because all our institutions were able to survive the strain and the pressure of that period. Now, it was around that time that those regulations were instituted that the FSC was established because it was necessary as well to protect not only depositors but also people who place their money with investment houses. So what happened to those regulations? What happened to the FSC? How did it fall down so badly in the stocks and securities matter? And what assurance can we take that it hasn't similarly fallen asleep with other investment houses? This is something that has serious implications, implications for our financial system. And let me explain. We need investments if the economy is to grow. If we are to produce more and export more to earn foreign exchange and create more jobs in the process. We can't rely on the investment that large companies like Sandals and Grace and Mossens make. Much of the investment we need come from people who do not have the strength of cash <coughs> of a Grace or a Mossens or a Sandals. Those investments are made by people who have good ideas but don't have the capital. It is the money that people like Usain Bolt and the lifelong savings that the pensioner places with investment houses like stocks and securities that are then made available to those investors. It is that which drives the economy and creates jobs. In fact, sometimes when you hear the big companies like Sandals and Grace and Mossens making, announcing large-scale investments, it is that same money that the people like Bolt and the little pensioner invest in places like stocks and securities. It is that money that very often is being used to finance those investments. So that when confidence in these investment houses is shaken, when people decide that it is safer to keep their money under a mattress or in a bureau drawer, it hurts the economy because that money is not available for persons who want to invest and to produce and to export and to create jobs. Worst of all, if they decide to use that money to buy U.S. dollars in order to protect themselves from inflation, it can lead to a shortage of U.S. dollars in the market so that importers are chasing dollars and can't find the dollars to pay for their imports. Government needs the dollars to service our foreign debt. And when the dollar is scarce, devaluation follows. And when devaluation follows, everybody suffer because the prices of almost everything run follow the dollar. So what has happened that tax and securities has wide-ranging implications and possibly serious consequences for the economy, for all of us. We have to talk about this today. I want to get some views from persons who understand these issues perhaps even better than I do and who can help us to find out what went wrong, what needs to be done to correct it, what needs to be done to make sure that it cannot happen again. I'm going to bring on our first guest when I come back. Welcome back. It's Jamaica Live. We're on Bridge 99. We're talking today about the stocks and securities debacle. And my first guest is a 
It's a household name in Jamaica, you know, when it comes to matters financial and matters economic. Uh, financial analyst, Mr. Ralston Hyman. Ralston, welcome to the program. Yes, sir. Good afternoon. How are you doing? This is your first time? Yes, yes. Now, yes. now what, to, what took you so long? <laughs> well, nobody called me. Well, yeah? All right. Well, you, and call me regularly. well, keep your phone open. All right, sir. Tell <laughs> me now, um, based on what is in the public domain, I don't know, you probably have information that we don't have, but based on what is in the public domain, how could what happens? How could it have? How could we have gotten there? How could it have happened, Ralston? Simple. The regulators weren't doing their job. The regulators cited all the things that you cited before: the difference in assets and liabilities of 1.5 billion, late reporting, no disclosures as to where the funds were flowing from, lending while they are not um, licensed to lend. All of those things the regulators picked up. They said that they issued a directive to SSL to correct this problem. That was one Mr. Lawrence Crosley was the senior director in charge of securities at the FST. And we're seeing that in the paper this morning. They are saying that SSL met those conditions in 2017. So what we want to know from the people at the FST is what happened between 2017 and 2023. Why we now have this as a result. Tell me something. Are the are the regulations governing investment houses like stocks and securities? Are they fundamentally different from those that govern commercial banks? Well, I mean, basically they are basically similar. I mean, you can do whatever they wanted to do, what they did, like go in. You can remove directors. You can suspend the license. You can send in a temporary manager, as they did now. The question is. Why did they took so long to do that? And why they say that SSL met all the regulations in 2017 and we are now hearing about this? What they, did they do after 2017? Well, let me ask you this too, Ralston. Mm-hmm. Um, everybody that has had anything to do with stocks and securities is running for cover. Right. But put it this way. If, if I am holding people's money, Mm-hmm. Money belonging to Usain Bolt and everybody else. I'm holding people's money. I'm a director. I'm a senior executive. Um, somewhere along the line, I need to satisfy myself that if the money I'm holding come up to $500 million, I need to see on the other side of the balance sheet. Now, what do we have to back the $500 million? How much Go we ahead. have... How much we have invested in, in stocks on the stocks market? Mm-hmm. How much we have invested in government bonds? Where is that money? Because I have to make sure that if you see in bold word to say to me, listen, um, I need to put up a new uh, BPO thing, so I need the 12 million. I must be able to cut him his check and make him go build whatever I want to build. Correct, in real time. If yeah. you want to maintain confidence in the organization. So what and I- the responsibility of the regulators is to make sure that you are doing that. Well, before we even get to the reg, I come into yeah. them, you know. Yeah. But before we get to the regulators, the board. You mean to say that the board at no time ever then then when the reg- when when the, when the auditors when the external auditors said mm-hmm. to them that you you have accumulated deficit of one and a half billion, yeah. accumulated deficit must mean that you your obligations far exceed what you have. Yeah, I said yes, of course. Then that's not frightening something. Of course, it's a frightening scenario. Then, then the board. It's a frightening scenario. Then the board would not have been aware of that auditor's report. Auditor's. Most certainly, most certainly. And what they did? Well, they basically did nothing, and then the FSC flagged them on, on it, and the FSC contended that they satisfied those conditions and corrected those problems in April of 2017. But 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 was that done to the satisfaction of 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 the FSE? Well, that's what they said this morning. And if it was done to their satisfaction, why is it that we're having the current situation? So the FSE clearly fell down on the job. No, you you you, uh, you I'm sure would have seen the statement by this lady, Miss Panton, no? Of course. I read it, and she she went into some detail to sort of outline exactly how she did the thing. Mm-hmm. I didn't know. I didn't know that it was possible for you to you take money from the account, but you put back some zeros to show that no money has been taken. 
Right. Then no internal audit that don't block that up. That's the point I'm making. And, you know, before, be, 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 e, e, even before the external audit are coming, Correct. even before the FSC come in, Correct. the internal audit and I should say, hey, you know, what the hell is going on here? What is happening here? Of course, you are correct. All right. So it tells you that there was a total breakdown for even the CEO to say that he was not aware of the client list. So what is it that they discuss in the meetings in the morning when they have meetings? Well, that's, that's, that's what I'd love to know. That's what I'd love to know. <laughs> so tell me now. This lady went through, went to great detail to identify the accounts that she tampered with. But you saying Bolt is not there. He's not there, yeah. So who tampered with his money? That's what we want to know. That's what we want to know. And, 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 and the tampering that went on with his money seems to be more than all of what this lady is confessing to. Correct. Correct. Now you tell That's me. That's what we want to know. You tell me now, because I know you can take a broad view. Beyond SSL and beyond their clients, and everything has to be done, of course, to try and uh, restore their money. I hope they don't end up with a situation where they're being told by Mr. Ken Tomlinson that they have to discuss how many cents they can get back in the dollar. Well, I believe that that is the situation. And of it's course... And of course, I don't believe that anybody, not after we, we, all we've been through in the past, I don't believe anybody should should call the taxpayer and say, come Mr. No, taxpayer, come help us out. No, certainly not. Certainly not. No way. No, beyond, beyond the, the clients themselves, what are the implications this has for the economy or our financial right. sector? Simple. Now, this thing is getting a whole lot of external legs. We have a country that we are dependent on foreign direct investment flows. We are dependent on remittance flows. We are also very dependent on the BPO sector to close what we call the trade gap, the difference between merchandise, imports, and exports. That gap was running at $4.1 billion for the first eight months of last year. We imported $5.2 billion, exported only $1.1 billion. So we depend on these funds to close the gap. Now... The external people, they are losing a whole lot of confidence. This is being reported in Bloomberg, Wall Street Journal, White, right across the board. We have already seen a slowdown in the remittances, and we expect a further slowdown as the global economy slows down. We, this loss of confidence, will have a deleterious impact on inflows into the country, foreign exchange inflows, particularly from the remittances sector, which is our largest source of foreign exchange, 21% of GDP. Then there's the BPO sector, because the word is that we're scammers. Now, the BPO sector operates on that level of confidence, people's client list and all of those things. So we could see a pullback in investment in that sector, which is one of our fastest growing sectors. And that's a big problem. There's a problem, a program of financial inclusion. We are trying to get more people to participate in the formal financial sector. A lot of the people who pull big money, the sporting people like both himself and the entertainment people, they never had any confidence in the financial sector in the first place. This is only going to exacerbate the problem. So as you said before, we could see less foreign exchange flowing into Jamaica and more foreign exchange flowing out of Jamaica as people take steps to cover themselves. What we have seen since this incident, the Bank of Jamaica has done a fairly good job in keeping the dollar stable. Since this incident we are seeing now, we are trading almost at 155 from 153. The more we lose confidence and the more people lose confidence and start to move their money, uh, the more external people decide that they are not going to pump any money in Jamaica. It is the more pressure that is going to come on the exchange rate. As you said before, pressure on the exchange rate means that Governor Biden will have to use more of the foreign exchange rate to intervene in the foreign exchange market in order to keep the currency stable. And there's, a, li and there's allowed, a limit to what he can do there. Precisely. That's the point I'm going to make. Now, if that happens and the dollar starts to move in the other direction, 155, 156, we're going to see more inflation. The cost of living is going to go up for everybody. And we're going to have a massive problem. It means that the impact of the slowdown in the global economy is going to be more pronounced. So we have a rate of growth that is targeted about 2.5% for this fiscal year. We could see flatlining and then we could end up in decline, which means suffering for everybody. So this is a very serious issue which we have to resolve. And that is why we have to say, we have been saying to Minister Nigel Clark, 
You have to get rid of Everton and you have to get rid of the entire board at the FSC. And you also have to tell the country what happens after 2017. Additionally, you need to look right across the financial sector, come up with policies to tighten control, increase the level of insurance in these the, 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 the non-deposit taking institutions, stiffer penalties for the directors of company, as you, companies, as you have said, who have breached their fiduciary responsibilities. And of course, as, as, I, as I alluded to earlier, if the stock of savings, because when you say bull put 12 million there, that's savings, no? Yes. If the stock of savings declines, then the cost of borrowing money for investment will go up. Uh, is going to go up, and the yeah. amount of money that can be borrowed for investment is going to shrink. Simple. And, and the we, economy and itself is going we, to we shrink. We can't afford that. No, not at this time when the global economy is slowing down. No, certainly not. No, if, if you were the Minister of Finance, what would you be saying this evening? Well, as I said before, I'm a fire on the FSC board, a new board, will give a commitment to the country that will leave no stone unturned to ensure that the people know what took place after 2017. I don't know stiffer penalties for directors, proper fit and proper rules, stiffer penalties for directors will breach fiduciary responsibility. And I think the minister needs to set up a department within his office to regulate the regulators and to see that they're doing their job. Well, one other, th one other thing I want, to, uh, 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 I want to bounce off you. Uh, the, the, the banks that take deposits, they are required to make public their financial statements. Yes. Why are the investment houses similarly required to do that? Precisely. That is something that must also, the minister must also ensure. Yeah, precisely. Yeah. So, so that people like you who understand them numbers can scrutinize it. Correct. And to see what is happening. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Because we know the, the, the deposit-taking institutions they have to publish their reports on a six, section 64F of the banking act. We need to require the same thing from those non-deposit taking institutions. I agree with you. I don't know. I, you know, I thought that we had learned our lesson. You know. I really right. thought so. I, yes. mean, I didn't know that we would be climbing around this mulberry bush again. 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 We can't allow it. And we it can't can, allow it. And you, you, can, you can lose confidence overnight, but you, overnight. Can't, you can't rebuild it overnight. That's correct, sir. That is correct. That's correct. And we cannot afford a loss of confidence in the financial system at this particular point in time when the world is on recession watch. Yes. Yes. And then we of cannot course, afford it. And then, of course, you know, because you see Bolt is involved. It is in exactly. every newspaper, everywhere, every part globally, of the world. Globally, yeah. I've right. been talking to people globally about this thing, and one thing you have to do is to tell them that, boy, the system is fundamental. It sounds, this is just an aberration because we cannot afford it. I run on the Jamaican dollar. Well, you can't tell them that unless you know it's true. Well, <laughs> that is why the minister so, has to so follow you need through. So you, you need to fix fix it fast so that you can tell them that. Precisely. Precisely. Well, let's wait to see what comes out this evening. This evening, yes. Ralston, well, I'm going to have you back. Yeah, man. To talk about some other matters. Anytime. Mr. Ralston Hyman, financial analyst, helping us to... Well, he never means the word, you know. Him so that you must fire left, right, and center. Um, and you must put in some new penalties and hold people accountable. And I agree with him. I agree with him. You know, government have a responsibility. They are the ones that issue licenses to these investment houses, you know. And in the issuing of the license, what they are saying to the public is that I'm satisfied that these are good people to do business with, so you can go do business with them. Well, that is what you see in Bolt did, and look what happened to him. Let's take a break. Welcome back. It's Jamaica Lab. We're on Bridge 99. We're talking about the goings on at um, stocks and securities. Serious matter. We had just had a discussion on it with Ralston Hyman. Very pleased to bring on to the program now Mrs. Jean Laurie Chin. Jean is the visionary behind the Caribbean. Council of Retired Persons, and she recently expressed concern, understandably, uh, about the fate of retired persons, pensioners, people who may have put their money with, with stocks and securities. Because, you know, if you put your money in savings account in a commercial bank 
I don't know what I'm paying out. One till was less than one percent interest. So some of them may have been motivated to put their money with stocks and securities in the hope that that money would be well invested, well managed, and they would get a reasonable return to take care of their their pension, their old age necessities. And she expressed concern and asked for some sort of special protection. Not sure how that would work, so let's hear from her. Jean, welcome to the program. Thank you so much, Honorable Bruce. And um, yes, we are very, very concerned. You suggested that uh, some sort of special protection for pensioners. How would that work, though? I mean, what sort of special protection that would be any different from the protection that you say in Bull should get? Well, I was suggesting to the Jamaica Bank, Bankers Association and the FSC that once somebody reaches the age of 70 and they do not have a co-holder on their account, that they should encourage them to put a trusted relative on their account so you would have a two-step approval on any activity on account. And I think that is one of the problems, you know, that... But, how, we, but yeah. how would that have stopped this lady from teething out the money? Aha. Uh-huh. Well, the other suggestion that was made by Dennis Chung, and, uh, and I really... Um, co-sign what Ralston just said, is that we use, the banks use tech, use technology. Whenever we use our credit card, we get an immediate um, notice, yes. either on, on text or on um, email. Yes. And there is no reason why these other financial, well-funded financial institutions cannot introduce that technology. And they must, and I think this is something the FSC should insist on. But you didn't, you didn't read this lady's statement, Jean. This lady said, you know, when she took the money from the account, she put back some zeros on, 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 on the account so that when you look at the account, it's 12 million Usain Bolt is supposed to have there. Just that is that 12 million them had in, in real investments for him. And if auditing, if proper auditing was being done year to year, that would, would have been discovered. It, mu- it would have had to be discovered. I mean, yeah. I don't know what their internal audit people were doing. So, you see, that is another reason why the FSC has to really take on that role to ensure there is accountability and transparency. Well, how could they have fallen down so badly, Jean? I don't know, because um, we understand that in 2017, um, they were given this warning, and for some reason, there was no follow-through. And, um, well, we saw the announcement by the Minister of Finance this morning that he will be appointing a new board, because... Uh, too many things have fallen through the cracks. Too many things. Yeah. But, I, I, but I think we're going to have to do more than that. I think we're going to have to revisit the regulations. I haven't looked at them for a long, long time, so I'm not, mm-hmm. I have to refresh my memory. But we have yeah. to look at those regulations, compare them with what applies to the deposit-taking institutions like the commercial banks. Right. To look at the kind of supervision that the Bank of Jamaica exercises over the commercial banks and to see to what extent the supervision arrangements at FSC falls short of that, tighten that up. Yeah. I suggested to, Roy, uh, um, to Ralston as well that in the same way that NCB and Scotia and First yes. Global are right. required by law to publish annually their financial statements, these investment houses should be required to do that too. They should be. And so, that, so that people like me and you can look at those accounts and, you know... See so whether or not. Stand. Yeah, yes. that's right. But you see, those those deposit taking institutions too, they guarantee that their investment arms um, are covered, are yes. insured. And this is not applicable, I think, to many of these other um, investment houses. So, as you say, the regulations have to be tightened. Are you know, and even, yes. We, we want, the last thing I would ever want to do is to suggest contagion. But, hmm. I mean, let us say let us say that somebody sold their house hmm. and they have a 40 million or a 50 million in their hand. Um, you can, can you blame them if they are like, reluctant about taking it to any of these investment places? Well, no, yes. Because um, look at what happened to that poor man in uh, the FinSAC yeah, situation. Yeah, I read the story. I poor referred to it this morning. They forged his signature and put on three other mortgages on his house. Yes. So, you know, um, there, there is so much that needs to be done, but especially for the elderly 
And um, we have had people, the late Sushil Jan, he had warned us long ago about unregistered investment schemes. And he, has, he even said that when a federal relative um, recommends a scheme, get a second opinion. Don't just go in headlong without checking out your options. And um, we also had SSC Stephanie Lindsay, who says, you know, check your bank statement, report any strange activity. She even gave us an email, fraud squad at jcs.gov.jm. But Jane, Jane, you're saying both said that the last statement he got was in October. And the statement yeah. showed that his 12 million was safe. As a matter of fact, the 12 million had grown to almost 13 million. That yes, was in October. Say, yes, but the auditors at SSL were not checking this. And so, therefore, this is why you see these regulations have to be tightened. Because you have to go from the beginning when you're investing your money to see what sort of regulatory system the institution has in place. But, you know, if, 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 if even the external auditors... Uh, I think yeah. in this case it's KPMG. They cited a thing from 2017 yeah. that they were accumulating deficits of 1.5 billion, and they expressed the view that they couldn't guarantee that the company could continue to operate. Now that was a big red flag. Yes, but I, I don't, mean, I don't think that they went far enough because yeah. they needed to have gone deeper now to say, now why is it that the amount of money you owe to your clients? is short $1.5 billion when yeah. compared to the amount of money you have invested. Oh, and pick, start picking out the account now to say, but hold on. Um, this account is all right, but this one is in trouble. How come? You know, in other words, if it's a general situation where they make bad investments and the stock that they invested in have declined in value, then it would have affected everybody's account. But if, you, fi if you find a situation where some accounts lost plenty of money, and that account didn't lose so much. Some accounts weren't touched at all. That tells you that some rat is in the place. That's right. And I think that is when the SSC, after that 2017 intervention, they should have published a notice to the public so that people knew what they were about and could have been warned. And, 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 and at that time, they should have taken over close supervision of the place. Maybe that's, when, that they should have, maybe that's when they should have sent in a Mr. Tomlinson. To assure, the, to assure the public that, look, they're still doing business, but we are keeping a watch on the daily transactions to make sure that everything is all right. They didn't do that. That's right. They, they, they really, they really um, slipped on that. Really slipped on that. Uh, for and, you, you know, <coughs> yeah. go, go ahead, Jean. I'm sorry. I was just saying, I was very elderly, you know. They, I used to get in their bank book. And, and in fact, General Colin Powell related in his autobiography that his mother, who was then residing in the U.S., asked him to get a bank book and stating in Jamaica language she didn't want them to tee her. Mm. And that is in his book. And so, you know, I think our banks also should bear in mind that there are some elderly who will never be online and have certain facilities for them. Well, I wish them luck. But tell me, that for yeah. your members, you, you have yeah. a program within CCRP to try and provide them with financial advice? Yes, we do. We have had several sessions. Uh, we have had with BPM Financial, with Scotia Investment, as I mentioned, Sushil Jan, Stephanie Lindsay for Financial Security. And, you know, we continue to do this so that our members can be warned. And um, also, in the case of people who are, you know, having caregivers, mm -hmm. we are suggesting that if you cannot supervise that caregiver, use a nursing service who can supervise them. Because we have heard some horror stories about theft by caregivers. There's some basic information about SNL that, that I don't know why it is that we don't have. You know, for example, did they have insurance? Because financial institutions normally, or are required, I'm not sure, carry I think insurance. a minimum amount. I, I don't think, I, again, I hear a call for increased insurance because I hear that the insurance that they had was minimal. Well, minimal meaning how much? But I don't know. I don't know. But um, that's, that's very troubling. Because what, I, what, what I'm fearing is that at some point, after all the investigations have been made, after all the arrests have been made and charges laid, I don't understand how no arrests have been made yet. But after all of that has been done, you know what I fear, Jean? That they're going to summon all the, the, the people who invested their money there to a meeting. Oh, and they're going to tell them how many cents in the dollar they are likely to get back. 
Or are you going to explain that to one of your pensioners? No, listen, that is just a heartbreak for them because some of them have their entire nest egg in SSL. Yes. So, um, well, I do hope that the Ministry of Finance will find some way of assisting some of these very elderly folks well, because don't, they will be... Don't, don't, don't expect the taxpayers to pick up that burden again. Them, them did enough with FinSAC. Yes, I know. 300 and odd billion dollars taxpayers are defined. Well, let us, see well how it, let us see how it plays out. We're going to be watching this one very closely. Very closely. And, and thank you for your concern for our elderly members, elderly teenagers yeah. in the club, because they are the ones who are really going to suffer. I mean, they're not gamblers, you know. That's right. These are people who work hard, save up their money, deprive mm-hmm. themselves of a lot of things that others of us prefer to enjoy. Right. And do all of that in the hope that they will never become a burden on anybody, including their own children. And when you get old now and you expect to get that money to pay for your medication, you're told that somebody teeth it off. It's heartbreaking. And teeth, I and, and teeth it off to go buy expensive houses and apartments. Well, it's man. Well, I hope they can track all of those funds. I hope they can track and freeze everything so people can get back their money. It, it, that, that's not hard to track. That's not hard to mm-hmm. track. I mean, they may have put it in all kind of different names, but that's not hard to track either. Uh, I've heard that. I've heard that they can track it, and I hope that it will happen very quickly. Paper, paper trail is there. Yes. All right, Jean. Jean Larichin, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Honorable Bruce. All the best. Now. Good. Thank you, too. Right. All right, let's take the break. Welcome back. It's Jamaica Live. We're broadcasting on Bridge 99. We're going to be linking with New York shortly. Um, Long to hail up Beauregard. I haven't spoken to him for a good while. But we're talking today about the goings on at stocks and securities. Trying to understand, well, trying to understand how could what happens or what appears to have happened, how could that have happened? But more importantly, where do we go from here? Um, how do you safeguard um, the integrity of our investment houses? How do we cauterize the damage that this is doing to Jamaica's financial reputation? Very pleased now to be joined by Dr. Andre Horton, who is an economist, lecturer at the University of the West Indies. Dr. Horton, welcome to the program. Do we have Dr. Horton in line? Not there? We're trying to see if we can get a um, link with him. To get his perspective, I'm, I'm very... I think it's important in all of this, you know, rather than simply expressing anger and anguish and disgust. Uh, we have some repair work to do, and we have to try and see the extent of what has happened and how best we can protect those persons who are affected. But equally important, if not more important, is how do we, how do we go forward? How do we ensure? that when the government says we have issued a license to these people to accept your money and invest that money wisely, how can we have confidence that that is what they're going to be doing with our money? Because this is quite clearly not all of what was going on at Tax and Security. Dr. Horton? Yes. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Welcome. How is everything going? Blessings. I'm good. All the best to you for the new year. Thank you, and the production team. Yeah, tell me, uh, we're talking about the situation of stocks and securities. Now, Andre, from time to time, you, you know, you, you have financial institutions, you have the banks and so mm-hmm. on, and from time to time, you will find an instance where there is some errant employee yes. Who, yes. who, you know, takes advantage of some unsuspecting, some gullible customer. Yes. and dip the hand into the account. <laughs> and sometimes we find it out, um, and, and, and the police get involved and an arrest is made. I have mm-hmm. to know from experience that a lot of what goes on, the bank don't bother calling the police because they're afraid of reputational damage and will fire the person and try and recover <laughs> what money they can. I yes, know that as a fact. I know that yes, as a fact. But, but, but what... <laughs> 
what appears to have gone on at Stocks and Securities? This lady who has uh, issued a confession, if mm-hmm. her confession is truthful, she yeah. has not mentioned one word about Usain Bolt. She has not. And he appears to have suffered more loss than anybody else there. Based now, on what we see on paper, but there, there's words in the grapevine that there are other people who have suffered loss. Well that well that well well, well well that is what I was coming to because it appears that um you know a, a, a fine time was being had by more than one mm-hmm. and and it it may very well have become a culture inside there we're 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 where okay. where you know um I do not look a thief in I know you're a thief in too. So you don't tell on me and I won't tell on you. Yes. Now, explain to me, how could that have gone on for so many years? This lady says she started doing it in 2010. That's, mm-hmm. that's 13 years ago. How, how could this... Yeah, she says she started then because she needed money for her father's medical bills, right? And I think he died in 2013. Now... How could this have gone on so long? Yeah. And um, I, I don't come to FSC yet, you know. <laughs> you, mm. I, I'm going to deal with them in a little while. Yeah, yeah, but how yeah, could this have gone really on for so long and the management didn't didn't understand, didn't know what was going on? Explain that to me. You know how business is supposed to run. <laughs> you see, the thing is, what, what, what I've observed based on the discussions that have been taking up, taking place, the run it appears that everyone was involved along every level of my Remember, we're not sure. We're just making an important deduction. But the idea that a company owned not by, sh- not by shareholders publicly anymore, but by private individuals, think about it as if you are a private individual who owns a private company, you are along with some of your colleagues. Now, the idea is this. There must be some suspicion that some level of irregularity was taking place on the watch. Well, on that point, you know, you're, on that point you're making, Andre. Yes. The banks. The banks yes. are required by law mm-hmm. to publish annually. Their financial yes. statements, audited financial statements. Yes, they are. These investment houses have to be licensed by the FSE. Mm-hmm. They are authorized to take people's money and to invest that money. Why should they not too be required to publish annually their audited financial statements so that people like you who understand financial statements can look at it and say, hey, but this don't look right? Yes, uh, the public, the public pub, pub, publishing is only if these companies are public. No but, so, the, no, but the law can require them to publish it. Yes, it can, of course, and it ought to, because we need not look at this happening as a negative, you know, because things like this happen in all over the world throughout time. I mean, I was reading some news last week, a Chinese employee who robbed 500,000 25 years ago, did some plastic surgery and moved to the Western world, was finally caught and sent back to China to be tried. So these things are happening all over the world where people work with money, they have needs, they see the money, and they feel the need to take it in however clever way they, they, they can. Now, yes, this has now shown us that the country needs to understand what these companies are doing. But what it also shows is that if this is happening in one company that was not being properly supervised then which company is being properly supervised exactly exactly so what it is showing is that y- 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 you're a politician so you understand the whole idea of a veranda canvassing well ex- well tell me now what do you think is what do you think are the implications a for confidence in our financial system that is one and two what impact do you think this may have on the availability of savings to fund investments, which is what the country so desperately needs. 
So, so, so you're on the right track. The, the idea is this has sent the shockwaves throughout our financial industry. It has sent a negative signal to the world about the affairs of Jamaica. You yourself, we was a prime minister, so you understand the amount of work that has gone into bringing the country to where it is now over the last ten. We had low rates, no ratings, that B plus. We had high rates, no our debt has come down tremendously. Our JDX and NDX that, that ensued has put us on a better financial path nationally and has projected to the, the world that America is open for business. And we were seen as an emerging market economy, even though we are a developing country. The world is looking at us as an emerging market. What can, what can we do to cauterize the fallout? We have to just highlight that the, 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 the whole capitalization of SSL is very small relative to the, the total capitalization of the financial industry. They themselves, as investors, global and international, must understand it. I don't know why. I seem to be losing you, know, Andre. Are you there? Can Are you me? hear me? I'm hearing you a little better now. I'd lost you for a little while. Uh, wait, let me see. Wait. Yeah, man. As I was saying, we need to illustrate to the rest of the world that what is at the SSL is not a reflection of the total Jamaican financial industry. We have to illustrate that by showing that the SSL market capitalization is a small amount relative to the rest of the Jamaican financial industry. Yeah, but but, are, but I, with the greatest respect, Andre, I don't think that that is going far enough. Because, yes, because, other, because fine, SSL, SSL may be small, but yes. who tell me that you don't, have, you don't have some rats in the other one them teething out the money too? The, exactly. It seems to me that FSC is going to have to do something which is abnormal, which mm -hmm. is that it is going to have to look. If it has not been looking before, and it should have been looking, but it's going to have to look at how many lic licenses they have? I, I was told of something like 17? Yes, 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 yes. They are going to have to look at everyone. Satisfy mm -hmm. themselves that those are operating in in proper form. People's money is well managed and so on. And they are going to have to say to the public, look, what happened at S and, uh, 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 stocks and securities is not happening elsewhere. These are the institutions we are assuring you. That we have yes. examined their books and we have seen their accounts and yes. they are safe for, for you to put the money. Now that is going far, you know, because normally the regulator steps in when somebody <laughs> falls out of line. They don't really go around giving people, you know, um, accolades and so on. But yes. if, we are, if, if we are to avoid the fallout, that, that, yes. that, 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 that could happen. At a mm -hmm. time when we can't afford it, the world is going into a recession. We need every investment dollar that we can find. Exactly. To be able exactly. to put into investment. And especially us who we have worked so hard. The last thing you want now is for people to the world. The last thing you want now is for people to start drawing the money out of these investment houses, converting mm -hmm. it into US dollars. And sending buy, it away. buying a safe and locking it up in them yard. Uh, exactly. Exactly. So a, a bank run we That's don't right. want that because what is happening now? We have a bank to run, a dollar run too. And that, that, time, run. that time now you're going to the dollar gallop. God, 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 God. This is all dried up. We have to project ourselves in a, in, a, in a more positive light to the rest of the world. We have to begin to know, let the world appreciate the institutions for what they are and their capabilities. And Jamaica has suffered from institutional weaknesses. I've just completed a book on overcoming productivity challenges in small countries, lessons from Jamaica. Uh, Paul Grace Macmillan is going to publish that book in April. And it, it, it has telling lessons on, on all the industries, including our financial services sector. And the idea that institutional weaknesses and corruption has been having a negative impact on how our industries have, have, have had a, a advanced over a number of years. So the idea is that we now have to start looking at these industries and to see how we can get prudence straight across the board. As it relates to our financial sector, we have to take it very serious. We cannot drop our hands on it because, as you know, capital makes everything happen. And the FSC now 
has to redeem themselves. They have to redeem themselves. And how do they redeem themselves? Just by what you have been saying, by illustrating that the rest of the financial service providers are robust in how they provide services and are not being undermined by their, their, their top management, middle management, or any of their employees in any significant way. How do you, super, how, yes, go ahead, go ahead. How do, you, how do you oversee a regulator? I mean, that's the job of the Ministry of Finance and the Minister of Finance, no? And the Bank of Jamaica. But, but the Bank of Jamaica wouldn't be responsible for FSC, would it? Yeah, but, yes, but they, even though they are not directly responsible, even though they are independent, because of the functions of the financial sector, and that, and that is what I've noticed about Jamaica, is that we everybody wants autonomy over what they are doing without seeing the relays that takes place between institutions and to reduce the level of bureaucracy of these relays. Too many Given compartments. The, exactly. So given the nature of Bank of Jamaica, we remember that most of the financial stability within the country and the macroeconomy in Jamaica is their responsibility. The Ministry of Finance mainly deals with budgetary issues from the, the central government point of view that deals with government spending and, 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 and taxes from fiscal policy point of view. But monetary policy that encapsulates the financial services industry has to be aligned to perform with, with the activities of the Bank of Jamaica. But I want and, uh, but, uh, but, uh, well, but you're onto something there because I want to pin it down. I mean, you have mm -hmm. an FSC that's supposed to report to the Minister of Finance, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not letting mm -hmm. the Minister of Finance off the hook because they may have dropped the ball too. But but so a lot of people but, but, have been negligent. But, not, not but, what, but, but what happens what happens if the FSC is saying to the minister, Man, everything cool, man. Look some minor little problems, but we have that under control. <laughs> um you know. Somebody we shouldn't have to do this, you know. But maybe mm -hmm. you're right. Maybe we need to maybe we need to really pull the the, the, the investment houses under the ambit of the Bank of Jamaica supervision and monetary. They I don't I don't contribute. know I don't know that that would do, compromise their their their, their mandate. No, it won't because if, because those services fall directly under their mandate. So you can't have a, a body that's responsible for fiscal policy and a body responsible for monetary policy and the institutions that allow the pass through of monetary policy to the general public are being governed by the, the body that is responsible for fiscal policy. That is why we end up in these problems because they are not the experts in financial stability in Basel requirements because that's another problem as well. When you look at Basel, which is how our financial institutions and sector is to be regulated, the world is now at Basel 5. Basel, Basel is a... Where are we? We are Basel 2. So... We, 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 we're 30, 25 years behind the rest of the world as it relates to financial regulation. We need to improve. You get me? So, so, yeah. so this, this, this is where we, we find ourselves in a bit of a problem. Because similar to how we established EPOC, which is the Economic Policy Oversight Committee, that was really over, had an oversight on the economic management of the country, irrespective of what the Minister of Finance was doing and the Bank of Jamaica and other bodies. It appears that if the FSC needs an oversight body for themselves as an oversight body, so we need a, a double bracket check and balance system, which is going to be difficult because employees within companies understand how the companies function. If you are Bruce Golden and your email address is Bruce Golden, and I, and I, and I make an email address, Golden Bruce, it looks 99% like yours, and I send information from that email, it's going to take forensic investigators to be able to stay to the Bank of Jamaica. No, but take a look at this. It's not Bruce Golden who sent the email, it's Golden Bruce. Does Bruce Golden have an email called Golden Bruce? Is this in the system? So, so, so the granular nature of the investigation is going to require people who are fully experts at forensic data science and as well as financial regulations and compliance. And, 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 and many of these government ministries in, in 
and, and agencies are short staffed and as a result many, many of them cannot carry out the functions that they would want to carry out so they end based on third party info and they may and not they may not have they may not have the skill set Exactly. So the people who they are supposed to be monitoring and supervising may be running rings around them? Exactly. Exactly. So you would say to me, Andre, go to West Kingston as an example. Find out how many shops there are. Find out if the shops are owned by a female. And find out, for example, what these shops sell and bring a report back to me. And I say, okay, Sir Goldie, no problem. And I go down to 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 to, to, to West Kingston, check one of my friends, sit down with them. General, shop your seals again. Oh, yeah, no, Miss Panji, oh, no, Miss Pat, Miss that, 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 how much of them? About 15? All right, 15. How much of them, I think, owned by a man? So, about 8, 9, the general, real thing, man, about 8, 9 of them, all right, you know, 8, 9. And then I present that information to you without yeah. doing the real work, which is. Going lane by lane, avenue by avenue, checking things and, 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 and presenting a, a more complete report. Uh, what, what are you expecting to hear this evening from the minister? Well, this evening, what we really want to hear from the minister is how Jamaica is going to present itself in, in, in a better light to the rest of the world. We want to understand what are the checks and balances that, that are now being put in place to ensure that something like this does not repeat itself in the short order. If you can remember 2008 with the global financial crisis, it was ir irregularities emanating out of a few firms that spread to other firms that caused the entire financial system to, 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 to collapse. Because the, because the whole system is interconnected. Exactly. Exactly. And the idea now is that Based on the conversations that I've been, with, I've been having with people since the, the occurrence of this incident, is that both which is for want their money back. Yes. So it has to now drive confidence into the financial service industry so that people at this time don't feel the need to withdraw any amount of savings or long term pension funds so that the country can continue to have investment capital available in order for us to exfoliate ourselves and, and continue to invest and grow. Well, a lot, a lot is going to depend on what the authorities, including the Minister of Finance, do over the next, I would say, over the next 72 hours. Yes. The next and 72 the, hours will determine, in my view, what happens for the next 72 days. All years. <laughs> Andre yeah. Houghton, thanks a lot yeah. for joining me today. Yeah, it was a pleasure joining you, man. Uh, stay positive and let's keep the discussion going. It was yeah, a pleasure speaking to you as well. Yeah. That's uh, Dr. Okay. Andre Houghton, economist, uh, lecturer. Uh, Beauregard is on. Big Bo. Good afternoon, Mr. Golden. What up, my friend? I'm here, I'm here. I haven't spoken to you in a while. But yeah, that's true. I, I mean, know you were all taken care of some serious business. Yeah. Bo, yes, this, this, this problem at Stocks and Securities, is it reverberating reverber, in New York? Yes, sir. All over the tri-state area, all across America. Um, you know, the fact that uh, a popular world-known figure like yes. Usain Bolt is involved, you know, it draws a lot of attention. But it's quite possible that you have some Jamaicans up there who had money there too. We don't even know. Yes, and we know that it's not just um, Usain Bolt, but, you know, he's the one that, yeah. you know, maybe if he wasn't involved, then maybe we wouldn't hear about some of the, the, the That's right. this that is going on now. But what I don't what I do understand, though, I mean, my Andre Hart was just saying that, you know, it happened all over the world, but I don't understand how this business could have been going on the lady who has confessed, mm. who has issued the confession statement, she started thief in the money from 2010. Wow. Both that's 13 years ago. Yes. If you so run in a grocery shop and people thiefing out your, your flour or your cornmeal, mm -hmm. I, I don't say, you know, them can't get away with it for a week or two or three. Yeah, but, but after point. a while, you're going to realize that's something, something funny going on because you're, 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 you're spending money to buy the flour and the cornmeal and the rice. Mm -hmm. But you're not getting the money back in the cash register. So you have to go find out what the devil is going on. How True. could this have gone on for 13 years? And it's just now that 
people find it out? Well, we have to look into it, you know, Mr. Golden. The fact that it's been going on so long, um, it, it tells of how many people might be involved and, you know, if anyone well, else knew about it well, and it was well, covering up. Bear in mind that this lady, this lady has presented a statement listing about 40 different people that she says she took money from. Mm-hmm. Usain Bolt is not among them. Wow. But he, he has lost more money than anybody else. So who took his money? How many people were taking money? And, how, many and pe- not, how many people were having a fine time? And none of the other um, victims didn't come forward um, not, during all that time? Well, you see, the victims wouldn't know, you know, because the, Usain Bolt said that up to October. He got a statement from Stocks and Securities showing that his 12 million had now grown to almost 13 million. So he said everything cool. But what they were doing, they were taking the money out and then they were fiddling the numbers so that it looked like everything is, go- is, is okay. Now, nobody else has up to now come forward and say, well, I was taking money too. Mm. But I imagine if one person has confessed, yes. I imagine that the police now should be in a position to investigate. To investigate. And if yeah. one person is willing to confess, then maybe in the hope of getting a lighter sentence when sentencing can come, they may be willing to cooperate as well. Mm-hmm. And so, because, you know, where, man, where, where? Man, man who thief in banana know, know who else thief in banana to, you know, because <laughs> they buck up in the banana walk. <laughs> you know what I mean? True, true, sir. True. Well, on this side, you know, um, as, as they investigate that they're in Jamaica, you know, on this side, our president, um, President Biden is under investigation also. Lord have some, mercy, what some documents that he took home do, while he was vice president. I know the Department of Justice is planning um, other searches on some more of his other properties because well, they are saying that they're well, finding some things now. Well, he's the best thing that could ever happen to Donald Trump. Because <laughs> he has now taken the heat off Trump. Yes, yes. Even, you though, think that even though their reaction in both instances is, is completely different, but is it is it looking like Donald Trump will will actually run again for presidency? Uh, boy, I wouldn't like to have to make a choice between two eighty-year-old people. Yeah? Mm. I don't believe that that is the way the world is going now. But anyhow, that is you must work that out with them up there. I'm telling you, I have enough problems <laughs> trying to deal <laughs> with SNL and, and so on down here. Uh, Yes, sir. How is it, what's the weather like now? 37 degrees was raining yesterday. I'm um, raining today. They're saying possibility of snow on Wednesday. Oh, father, so we'll you, see. You, you probably won't have the nice time till about April. I'm telling you, it might be a little longer too because, you know, the w- winter has been good so far. Yeah. Um, we haven't seen much snow and, um, you know, we have had some cold days, but it, it hasn't been that drastic. So maybe uh, when we're thinking that it might be over, it might be getting a little more longer yeah. before that. Well, mm-hmm. nice talking to you. You too, sir. Heal up everybody up there for me. I will. Let's take a break. Welcome back. It's Jamaica Live. We're on Bridge 99. We just spoke with Beauregard in New York to see what is happening up that side of the world. Because, you know, we broadcast not only to the audience here in Jamaica, but we broadcast uh, through Irish Jam to the New York audience as well. And we hail them up because... No matter how far away they are, no matter how long they've been away, I know that they are keenly interested in what is happening back here at home. Today we're talking about the debacle that has taken place, or is taking place, is emerging at Stocks and Securities Limited. And we're very pleased now to be joined by a security consultant whose perspective I'm anxious to to have uh, in terms of what is happening, one and two, what needs to be done to make sure it don't happen anymore. And I'm referring to Mr. Robert Finsley-Smith, who we have in studio with us. Robert, welcome. Thank welcome you, to the program. I made a point earlier that with the best management and the best regulatory system in the world, you're going to, from time to time, have an errant employee of a bank or of a financial house who may be emergency take them. Um, and they manage to find some gullible customer's account and they do a little thing. But you expect that the system is going to be so robust that they're going to be caught. Yes. Or should what you caught. don't expect is what this lady is telling us in her confession statement, that she started the teething from 2010. Mm-hmm. And she started it because her father was suffering from cancer. She had to send him abroad for treatment and she needed the money. 
But the father died three years later. But evidently the teething was so easy that it just continued. Mm -hmm. And apparently from what we are gleaning from newspaper reports, um, proceeded to acquire expensive properties and what not what. Question I want to ask, how in this modern day, with all the computer systems that are in place, mind you, as sophisticated as the system get, the sophistication of the system can also aid those who have mm -hmm. criminal intentions. No? Mm -hmm. But with the kind of checks and balances that are supposed to be available, how could this have gone on for 13 years, apparently undetected? And secondly, how could it be so widespread? Because the biggest loser in all of this, as far as we know up to now, is Usain Bolt. But she, she's basically saying that she never touched none of Usain's uh. money. So somebody else was having a good time with Usain Bolt's money. What kind of management could have been in place that could have allowed that kind of thing to happen? We have a saying in the profession, you are either complicit or incompetent. You choose which one you wish to be seen as. It is my opinion, and opinions they say everybody have one, but it is my opinion that she may have done what they call a monkey see, monkey do. Being in the position she was in, she could have observed something occurring. So it was feasible and jump on the bandwagon. I tell you why I think And so. I, I don't whistle blow on you so that you don't whistle blow on me. Yes. I have done investigations in other places um, where people went into what they call dormant accounts. They think the person has either died or is not coming back for no. Or just not paying no attention. Yes. And they then falsify the documents required to move and they move it to an account here and then move it to an account there. I once caught a teller at a bank that shall remain nameless that acquired almost three million dollars over a period of time. From the amount accounts? No, by, by taking everything after the decimal point. I follow you. <laughs> which, is, which is hard to detect because I don't, I don't pay the attention to anything that exactly. comes after the point. And they then know under the law, it is said that the definition of theft is intention to deprive permanently, which is why I observed the lady's statement for what it's worth. What do you mean? Well, pause there. What do you mean? So if I thief your car, and the policeman come to lock me up. I say I plan to I plan to get back to him. Yes. By Christmas. Yeah, I plan to, I, I, you, it, the closest you can probably get is driving away the thing without the owner's consent. Oh yes, that's me. Yeah. So what is Tiffin? So she Tiffin is showing intention to deprive you permanently of it. If you take the car and start to scrap it, you do not intend to return it, or you don't intend to return it in the state and value that you took well, it. This lady in her confession statement said that she was planning to put the money back. Exactly. So whoever but guided... Apparently from what, from what her statement says, apparently now when some of the people demanded their money or want to withdraw their money and she had already withdrawn it for, on their behalf, mm -hmm. she had to go from somebody else's account. Yes, Rob Peter to pay Paul. Yeah, so... <laughs> I come back to the question, who dropped the ball? Management? Internal audit? That external audit? Extra FSC? I, question is, when, was, when last was an audit done? What were the results? What were the actions based on the audit? What is an external, what, what is an external auditor supposed to do? Let me tell you why I asked you that question. In this case, the external auditors in 2017 issued a, an opinion where they said that this company is a, has accumulated deficits of $1.5 mm -hmm. suggesting that the money that you owe to your clients mm -hmm. is more than what you have on hand. on hand in terms of stocks and liquid instruments and so on. So you're two right? steps away from bankruptcy. Yeah. 
So, but if, is it all right for the external order to stop there? Or they not have, to have or they not to have dealt further to say, no, where has this money gone? The reason why I asked you that, you know, is that when they had the 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 scandal down at Petrojam, mm-hmm. I spoke with some of the top auditors in Jamaica, and they told me that detecting fraud is not part of their function. No. What do you, what they, they said do? They, they express opinion on the basis of and what they, is presented to them. And then you and the person in charge of the place answers the audit query, or should. Well, then what am I paying you $20 million a year to audit my company for? That's what UDC pays. If people can be thiefing out the money and, and, and you tell me that that is not your No, if I point to you a signpost that uh, there's a heck of a pothole in the road down there, you take steering adjustments to avoid it. If you do not and you hit it, <coughs> I am cool to say I told you it was there. In the old Jamaican parlance of song, they say, but you never, never tell me you. it was there. You never tell me that it was a pothole. You just tell me that I must drive carefully because the road kind of challenging. Well, with the figures you just quoted, mm. that's a pothole. Anybody in finance knows that but, that's a but, pothole. But, but whose job it is to do the forensic audit? Management must now call in a... Call in someone. And Should that could be somebody like you. If, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, that your but line of work. I, I do investigation. Yeah. Now, I don't do accounts, yeah. but I can point out where the behavior requires proof of... Particularly if they give you the clues to say, oh, look, this is where something funny seems to be yes, going. Yes. You can delve into that. Yes. Now, where was the FSC in all of this? At Sabina Park watching cricket? I, I don't know. Because no cricket not played out there for this long while. No, maybe they were planting the grass. But <laughs> that's how I'm being facetious. But the, the problem is, and this is why... I made the comment when the reporter from the Gleaner called me. We're in potential deep trouble. Because I've had people, I, I have contacts in various areas over the years. And people from one of the agencies in the United States that have three letters called me and indicated a level of concern because the words that came out of their mouth during the conversation was money laundering yeah. and the movement of cash in that willy-nilly fashion. You don't know what could have happened. It could be like you throw soap in the washing machine for the spin cycle. And, it, and, it, and it, if whoever was thiefing the money, if them, did, if, them, if them was using them brain, they would have leave you saying both money, you know, because yes. once you say a name involved in it at all, then it is in the India press, it is all over exactly. Australia, it is everywhere in the world. Exactly. Now, that what, is the problem. What is the extent of the damage to our reputation? As yet, or not, too early to tell. as yet not calculated. The problem is the person to whom it has been done has international reach mm. by virtue of they did that to who? Mm. That's the kind of situation. Now, rumors fly like bats in the night. And Jamaicans have little sayings like, if it don't go so, it nearly goes so. And everybody has their own theories. I believe that it was a little tardy in the response that came out eventually, Mm. which gave room. It's like you're playing football and you're playing defense and you're backing up, backing up, backing up before so you try to tackle. Goal. And you're back until you get a man a chance to shoot. Mm. So now there are a lot of things flying around the place. Like some people are questioning the integrity of some senior officer in the FID. In certain places that I have observed, they've named him. I won't, I won't do that. But when it reaches the they can call a man's name and say that it is reported that he deposited six million Jamaican at SSL and told the lady, Miss Panton, to put it in her name for him. Now, 
based on the current situation, he may very well be one of the main people to investigate her. If it is so. Yes. And then, of course, you know... And, of course, with, with, uh, with what you have now named social media. Ah, exactly. I mean, things grow legs faster than oh, any caterpillar, you know? Oh, yes. Bull can run that fast. Now, now the, the, what concerns me, you see, is that I believe... I saw something somewhere that indicated that there are 17 licensees on the FSC's uh, regulation. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the, whatever the number is. But what I think is most unfortunate is that you may have another investment house that is licensed, mm -hmm. that is running its business with scrupulous care mm -hmm. and attention, uh, mm -hmm. where they are tracking every cent and every day they have a reconciliation to make sure that their investments match up with their clients' money and so on. And they may find a situation now where somebody's coming to them to borrow money to tell us, you better give me my money, you know, because I don't trust none of them. Exactly. A matter of fact, it's rumored that there was a run on one such insti institution recently. And then the, and the, and the country hurts. It's not just them people hurt. Oh, yes, right? the country hurts. Because, because our credit rating goes through the basement. Our credit rating, and as I pointed out earlier, we have for a long time had a problem where we're not saving enough to provide the pool of investment funds that the country needs to grow. Mm -hmm. And these investment houses are an important conduit. Yes for getting those savings into the hands of investors through stocks and so on. And if you get to the stage now where people decide that, look now, I worried about inflation, but I worried about the safety of the money. Mm -hmm. I go and take out that money and I go and buy some US dollars mm -hmm. and I go and buy a little safe mm -hmm. and I go and lock it up in there. Mm -hmm. The US dollars will protect me from inflation and the safe will protect me from the place down but now. The safe will protect me from them thieves in them place. Or worse. No, if you get to that send, stage. They send the money abroad. Or they send it abroad. And what that means is that uh, you end up with a shortage of US dollars in the, in the market. Mm -hmm. So there's devaluation, the there's inflation, and your, and your and help your, and my help are to suffer. And your debt crisis yes. has gone way back to where yeah. people who have short memories won't remember it I mean, this, this thing has such wide implications. I'm actually sure hear what the minister said this evening. I believe he has to be bold. I believe he has to be tough. And can't talk with no water in the mouth. The country is looking for a, a level of clarity, determination, resolve, certainty. And he's going to have to deliver that this evening. Well, I don't envy him because, for instance, I hear there now, I was listening on the radio this morning, there seems to be a little difficulty in locating the younger of the two Kwaskis. Younger of the two? Um, gentlemen who own SSL. Oh, I see. He doesn't seem to be contactable. I, I hope that is just somebody, him turn off him phone and somebody can't reach him. But them trying to give the impression that him run. Well, I don't know why he would run if he don't have nothing to run from. Exactly. Or I'm saying only the evil flee when no one pursues. Yeah. yeah. But um, tell me, do we? Do, the, the, who is investigating? Is it SID or is I, Boca? I believe it's both. I don't know much about them. Do they have the skill set to understand the, the, the workings of them kind of financial system? I'm not certain. Because I don't know, for instance, the makeup of the personnel at FID and what their qualifications yeah. are. The well, I doubt, you know, I doubt that FSC had it. It's quite... I don't know if FSC had the kind of, 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 of talent that could go in there and say, but hold on, what the devil is this Something way? is wrong, yeah. Right? And people have probably been hiding behind that. You see, the problem is that because of all mere size... Sometimes relationships become almost incestuous. I am in a position where I'm supposed to be investigating you in case of something. But I drink with you because we're friends. And then some people find it difficult 
to part the line between their professional responsibility and their friendship. Do you think it may be necessary to call in um, foreign investigators? I think if we want to bring any form of confidence mm. to the result of what comes out, mm. it might be the best route to go. And we would have the, the, the networking to do that, no, in terms of yes. our police. I, for instance, know people, I personally know people of that capability and ilk abroad mm. who would do a fairly good job at it. Mm. It's, it's far better than, say, the Americans almost holding your hand behind your back and say, come make us show you what you're going to do. Yes. It is better that you request the response. Yes, yeah. yes. I, I brought up a case, a suggestion, a couple of weeks ago, and it's almost timely. I suggested that to help with our crime situation, we revert Vernon Field to the U.S. and put a Black Hawk squadron down there. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> no boat out of Colombia would come near our waters. Right now, the boats coming out of Colombia come through us. They only fear running into Black Hawks and that type of thing when they enter American waters. If we set up a base at Vernon Field, which is already set up, we can set it up and containers, for instance, are coming in by ear that we have concerns with. We search them at Vernon. Just land there. The plane can land there. It's, it's, it's an idea that never came across my mind. <laughs> it's one I think. I, I am wondering, you know, because I know, for instance, Mike Henry fought for years yeah. to get it as a transportation hub. Yes. yes. And we could use the rail lines running straight into Vernon. To bring and then the highway is there. What if I am a Colombian drug smuggler or somebody coming out of Haiti and I know that if I enter Jamaican waters, I don't have to worry whether or not the JDF Coast Guard have gas. Because these guys lifting up. You can fly drones out of there. You have backups. You use the JDF as a backup in terms of maintain our sovereignty by virtue of protecting the base and putting troops there as well and we will learn and we'll fly drones out of there for want if a guy messes around in Westmoreland and you need somebody to track him something lift up out of Vernon back, back, back to SNL the um, the banks mm -hmm. whether commercial or merchant mm -hmm. these are deposit taking institutions no? mm -hmm. they are monitored, regulated, supervised by the Bank of Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Two things I want to put to you. One, these institutions, BNS, Scotia, uh, First Global, you name them, NCB, they are required by law to publish annually their audited financial statements mm -hmm. so that you and me, everybody can look to see mm -hmm. if, we're, if, we're, if we're interested. These deposit taking, these investment houses, mm -hmm. which don't take deposits, but they receive your money to invest the money on your behalf. Why should they not also be required to publish annually? When you find out, let me know. We'll both know. Because it's logical. It's, it's not a far stretch. And the second question is, Ralston Hyman was of the view. No, it wasn't Ralston. It was um, Andre Horton is of the view that um, you should scrap the, FSS, the, the FSC and bring all of these investment houses under the Bank of Jamaica supervision. What's your view on that? Once you, you see, a unit is only as good as who leads it and who staffs it. Mm. What do we know about the capability of the Bank of Jamaica in its current state much less giving it this additional thing. What type of personnel is available to do that? Whether or not, whether or not, and it may very be that their capabilities have to be beefed up. Yes. But for a small country, to have two different entities doing essentially the same type of work. Tripping over each other sometimes. Tripping over, when we're short of skills. Yes. Maybe what we should do is beef up the 
capabilities within Bank of Jamaica and Celestino is the same kind of inspection, the same kind of monitoring. Mm -hmm. You take it over because you have a longer track record in this thing. Mm -hmm. You have learned the lesson the hard way because it was because you fell down to some extent why what happened in the mm -hmm. 1990s happened. Mm -hmm. Since that time, if anything, you have got too damn strict. Mm -hmm. Right? So you take over this thing and you keep an eye on them people for me so that I believe the public would be more inclined to put back confidence in, in these investment yes. houses yes. If, if something like that were If they knew that. that there's a headmaster with a cane. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But uh, what we'd also have to do, for instance, in somewhere like the Bank of Jamaica, the vetting of their staff for fit and proper yes. would have to be on a regular basis. Yes. For instance, if I joined Bank of Jamaica 30 years ago and you did a fit and proper on me yes. and I haven't done anything blatant that you can see immediately, there's no more done. So I could have association with people that are not... In other words, you, can, you could be no longer fit and proper. Yes, exactly. Do you know whether the people who work in these investment houses have to meet the fit and proper criteria? I don't think so, and I'm not certain. I don't. I don't think it's part of because Bank of Jamaica doesn't control them, so I don't think they're that. Well, FSC right. controls them. I must, yeah. look at, I must look at the law again because we I don't should know because if it, FSC has seemingly fallen down on other things that you yes. would have taken for granted, yes. I would be very surprised if they had not fallen down on yes. this as well. Yes. Um, the, the, this idea. <laughs> It's straying from a topic today, but this business of, of Vernon Field. Mm -hmm. Expand on that a little bit for me. Vernon Field was originally built by the United States yeah. in World War II. Yes. I believe that the runways were the thickest we have anywhere in the island. There are yeah. bunkers there. Yeah. Bunkers that they used to have ammunition, fuel, everything. It's set up. Yeah. They just have to carry it. So what, what would the Black Hawks do there? Sit and patrol. Every now and then they lift up and patrol, help patrol our waters or respond to people. And, that wh and why are they, are they so feared by the Colombians? Their technical capability that allow them to use the infrareds, the radars, and their firepower. They're very fast, they're dangerous. You don't want a black hawk on your tail. If you don't want to do that, you send up drones. Matter of fact, I would piggyback on them and say, while you're here doing that, go look on the farmland over stuff for me now. Have you, have you shared that thought with anybody in authority? Uh, there are a lot of things I've attempted to share, sir. Because it's, it's, cer it's certainly something that I... Would, 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 would the Americans be... Would the Americans be in, in, prepared to be engaged in that kind of way? You know, I, I can that? almost say yes, i tell you why. I'm a student of history, because I've learned through life there are two things. There's his story, and then there's history. So I follow history. The lease on Gitmo is almost up. I thought that was a never-ending lease. No, sir. It's almost up. You serious? It's, it's, a, it's a case where it is a diplomatic This, But think about America turning down a military presence of mobility avionics, 90 miles from Cuba. In interesting. Interesting thought. You could <laughs> make Clarendon in that area a very lucrative place to put up shops and everything. If you have U.S. servicemen sitting there, you're good. We started the program talking about stocks and securities and look at where we have ended. <laughs> As I would buy stocks in that. <laughs> That brings us to the end of the program. I'm right up on the on the deadline for to what to sign out. So let me thank all of you who joined me today. Thank all my guests. I'm Sir Alton Hyman. This is Gene Lovett Chin, Dr. Andre Horton, and in studio Mr. Robert Finzi Smith. We've been talking about stocks and security. What has gone on there, the implications it has for us as a country, what needs to be done. Listen out for the Minister of Finance this, this afternoon. He's going to be speaking on the matter. I'm sure all of us will want to know where we go from here and he's perhaps the best person to point the direction god bless you i'll be back here next week monday to do it all over again jamaica live bridge 99